Before we start to look at Arrow functions, let's have a quick review of functions in PHP. This might seem pretty obvious, but we need to distinguish between a named function and an anonymous function or a closure, as we can also call them. Now, just before we get started, if you want to follow along, I'm currently in this directory here, and I'm just gonna go ahead and boot up a local PHP web server. So you can do that really easily with PHP, the S flag, and then the port and the host that you want to run this on. Okay, so let's take a look at a really simple function. So when we normally name a function out, we will use the function keyword. We'll go ahead and give the function a name. And then of course, inside of the block is where we run the code that we want to run when we invoke or call or run the function. So in this case, I'm just gonna return hey. So that greeting function goes ahead and returns hey. So let's go and just var dump on greet like so. And let's head over to the browser and give that a refresh. And sure enough, we get that string being returned. Now we can convert this over to an anonymous function, but we can assign that anonymous function to a variable name and we can call that variable uh, as it was a function. So by that, I mean, we can switch this around by getting rid of the name just here. And we can go ahead and instead assign this on this side. So we're basically saying that we want to assign this anonymous function, which doesn't have a name, to this variable. And the great thing about anonymous functions is we can pass them around our application. We can use them as closures inside of other functions, perhaps that uh, determine uh, or use some kind of callback. And that's where the arrow functions that we're gonna discuss come in. Now you see we've got a syntax error here. That's just because we need to end this with a semicolon. And the way that we call this function is slightly different. So we actually need to reference the variable name that this function is assigned to. So let's go over and give that a refresh. And sure enough, we get exactly the same thing. Now, just before we go on, let's take a look at another example of using an anonymous function. Anonymous functions are mainly used when we have some kind of callback. Uh, we want to use a closure to maybe iterate through some data, map through some data. But of course, that can be used for anything. Now let's say that we have a list of users and this will be an array of arrays or a multi-dimensional array. And we're gonna have an ID for a user and a name for a user as well. So let's go ahead and just add in a name in here. Let's create another array within this array as well with an ID of two. And let's set the name here to something different just to represent two different users. Okay, so let's say that we want to extract the IDs from this particular array. How would we do that? Well, we can take the result of doing an array map, which will map over a uh, list of values in an array. And this will use a closure to return a different value to us. So in the case of array map, this takes as the first argument, an anonymous function or a closure, and as the second, the list of things that we want to map through. Now inside of this closure is passed each of these items. So we receive that user in, and we go ahead and return the data that we want to see. Now, if we were to just return the entire user thing in here and we var dump here on them IDs, we basically just get back the same object. So we've got an array of two items which are just the original objects we wanted. But what we can now do is we can go ahead and say, well, I just want to pluck the ID out here. Therefore, we've just extracted out the user IDs. And this can be really useful if you're perhaps submitting something through or syncing some IDs up in the database. It doesn't really matter what we're doing. So now that we've reviewed uh, functions in PHP, and we've looked at the difference between anonymous and named functions and seen these used in the context of closures, let's move over and see how we can use arrow functions to make doing things like this a lot shorter.